Hey guys, this is Strader James, bringing you guys a little thought here. Well, not really a thought, this is just kind of a uh, video about my... F well, yeah, it is a thought. I think about it. It is a thought. Because it's just my thoughts and feelings on the on the recent news that I found out, and I know it's a little bit old news, but I just found out myself that Paradox are not have decided to cancel the project of Hearts of Iron East versus West. And for those of you guys who don't know, that was basically a Paradox game where it was going to be set in the Cold War era, which... Would have been awesome, but sadly they canceled it. And I just want to get you guys to say that I am insanely disappointed with the pro with with this decision to cancel the project because if you know me, I'm a big historian. Like I'll be honest here, I know history like it's the back of my like it's the back of my hand. I mean, I won't say I know everything because that's just pure ignorance. The person who knows everything knows nothing. But I will say I do know a fair amount. So. Um, and I can accurately describe that my two favorite eras in the entire course of human history is not going to be the ancient, the ancient era where we have like the Romans, Greeks, uh, Egyptians, and the Chinese. No, it's not going to be like the medieval era where we have the knights, we have the knights running around, or we have the uh, Indian, the Indians, the Indians having their own little like civil war stuff going on. Then we also have the uh, Chinese having their own stuff going on. I think the Chinese at that point, yeah, they, that's the rise of the Mongolian Empire and the rise of different warring states. Okay, and then it's not it's not going to be going to be the uh, age of discovery as I coined it, or really the historians coined it, where they say like it's from when Columbus discovered the New World. Well discovered, discovered the new world, and then, like, all the cool and social political stuff that came about it. I don't really care about that kind of stuff. What I care about, personally, uh, is the eras of imperialism and the Victorian era, which is one of the most fascinating to me to see, like, the whole pseudo-political aspect of, like, how the world's changed in such a very, very quick manner. I mean, if you think about it, most time change takes two to three years, I mean, 200 to 300 years, roughly, this, some governments, I'll, I'll quote this with the Russians, some governments change basically overnight, and it's just amazing, amazing to watch. And besides that, the other most, most important era to me, or the one I really like to look at, is also the Cold War era, because I like the idea of that it wasn't based off of total aggression. Well, it was aggression, but it was a different type of aggression. It was aggression through, you know, the back corners or the back curtains, where, like, you know, you put a happy face on, like, a smiley face like this, and behind your back, you have a dagger. You know, that dagger, and you just be like, ah, ah, ah! You know, just that whole idea of what the Cold War was, and then also what it stood for, and, like, the whole, like, who's the ideology will win, the, com the communist or the capitalist, or... Who's who's ultimately right for the human race? Whose ideology was ultimately right for the betterment of the human race? That whole idea right there is really fascinating to me. And that whole, whole, whole era with the spying and the nukes and the conflicts and everything was going is is basically like it, it's my era, guys. It's like my era. So for them to when I heard about them making a game for this, I was like Oh, yes, yeah, sweet! I mean, we've had had some mods and some really nice expansion packs with, like, Hearts of Iron bringing out, like, the Doomsday mod or the Doomsday expansion. But, in all honesty, I don't believe they really capture what the Cold War was. Okay? I mean, it's cool to see the conflicts and the wars and all that kind of stuff, but really, the Cold War, and this is something you gotta fundamentally understand, it's not a war. It's just a conflict. It's just a conflict of espionage and and really just um influence that's basically what it is and i think and i'm one of those players that's really psyched about that kind of stuff maybe i say this right now i was really psyched when they uh when they were like saying that this was going to be more of a combination of how victoria 2 esque the victoria 2 how they do their spheres of influence where they were also the, but then they were also going to combine the uh, hearts of iron 3 uh, unit development, which I thought was going to go perfectly, because I really loved Hearts of Iron 2, not 3, 3 kind of stunk with the units, but Hearts of Iron 2 was really good, 
And then they were also going to provi provide one of my favorite things in Victoria 2, which was Spheres of Influence. I thought that was going to make a great combination right there, create a really holy matrimony, as you would say, and I was really psyched for it. Um, sadly, though, they canceled the projects. Um, they said it was due to delays. What that generally means is that the developers, this is what I'm guessing, is that the developers could not get along with their bosses, and so they, like, you know, had some friction there and, like, different, like, ways about how the game should act and be created. I think that's generally what, I'm getting that kind of vibe here from what they're kind of saying on their forums and what they're kind of hinting at. Um, I could be completely wrong, of course. I'm not saying my opinion's 100% correct. In fact, it is an opinion at, at the core, so take it what you will. But, yeah, I personally am disappointed with this project not going about, and, you know, I was really looking forward to it. As a solid Paradox fan, I was really looking forward to a chance to finally be the Soviet Union and crush the capitalist dogs under my hammer and sickle. I was ready to be the the Chinese Empire and make my influence outlast the Stalinist of the old world. I want to be America and be the capitalist nation to bring about a new capitalist world even unto the Chinese people. I was wanting to be this and I was really looking forward to all this but um, suffice to say this project won't come to pass but you know I kind of and also another sense I really do hope at some point this game is made. And yes, I know people are going to say, like, there's going to be that new Hearts of Iron 4 game. It's not going to be the same. Because Hearts of Iron 4 is set in World War II, and the World War II, and the World War II era, and the uh, Cold War era have two completely different goals, ideologies, and, in my opinion, different play styles. I mean, they could make a mod that extends it all the way up to 1991. All, they could make a mod that extends history all the way up to 2070. You don't get the same feeling of how the world is just because you extend the time period. So, even though I'm probably guessing Clots of Bible is going to be a great game, not going to deny it because everyone loves World War II. Everyone loves it. They love that time period. And I'll probably, you know, I'll probably do something on it. I mean, I feel I feel like World War II, I feel like World War II is like a dime a dozen. It's like the quick cast for like Paradox games, but, um, you know, it is what it is. I just... As I was saying, though, I just don't believe that because the two different wars, or two different ideologies of wars, of how to fight a war, well, really one's not really a war, and really one is a war, they will really not be compatible. So that's why I'm not really thinking that uh, Hearts of Iron 4 will be like the greatest thing save and be like the next one to be. Yeah. <laughs> it's just basically not going to be it. But in some, but like I was going to say, is that I hope at some point, though, that this game is made because I really did enjoy it. I really did enjoy this concept. I was really looking forward to this concept. Uh, coming, just coming from a purely, pure, um, you know, uh, Paradox game, like, they could have done some really awesome things. I think the biggest thing, the funnest, most, best part would have probably been the Death Con. The Death Con thing and the whole part with the Dukes. Oh, man, could you just imagine just, like, building 5,000 Dukes and then just, like, saying, okay, uh, hey, uh, Russia. You only have about 100 nukes, so, uh, me going to nuke you if you don't do what I want to, okay? Oh, look, all the UK, France, and all you guys, you guys want to stop me? Eh, hey, I'll nuke you too. So, bye-bye. So, yeah, just that. <laughs> that was my accuratation of how Americans act towards other countries. Mm -hmm. I think it was pretty accurate. <laughs> so, anyways, guys, please, I don't know, just, just a thought. I just hope that they make this game in the future at some point. I mean... You know, hopefully this time maybe Paradox will have a little bit more control over the project. I think that's probably another reason why I got shut down was because they didn't have as much control as they usually do with, like, um, the EU4s and the Crusader Kings. So hopefully they'll have, if they do do this project again, they have more control of the project. And I hope it will be a much, much, much more concise, more concisely, uh, basically I hope the project carries through. Okay, so, yeah. Thank you guys for listening to my kind of rant. Well, not really rant. This is more just a talk, idealistic talk. I'm glad you guys listened to me, and hope you guys are having a great day. Don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section. This is actually one of those videos where I will not actually post my usual uh, intro, so I actually have to say don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time. Oh, yeah. 
I can't press F3 to close the to close the video. Oh hey, see you guys next time.